I want to make sure that I address this question. What about when ABA fails or makes the child worse? Now, I've got stuff to say about that, but I'm, really, I'm for sure that you do too, Evelyn. <laughs> um, I'm in agreement that there is bad ABA out there. Unfortunately, there is a lot of bad ABA. And um, when people come to, when BCBAs come to CARD, we always say, if you really love the field of ABA, but don't love people, you're going to fail in this field. You know, it just does not work. You have to love people and love the patients you're working with and really want to like care about them to make ABA really effective and to really understand how to implement it too for every different child that comes in. And so there's that aspect, you know, and I know Dr. Graham Pichet, she actually went on with all our supervisors and said, if you love experimental ABA, but don't like people, don't be, you shouldn't be a card. <laughs> so um, it kind of shocked people, but it's very true. You have to want to help people in order for it to be effective. When ABA fails, I don't know if ABA fails or when people get worse, it depends what your definition of worse is, because there is a situation like behaviorally where if a child's been tantruming to get what they want um, for the last two years and suddenly you're not paying attention to that tantrum anymore and it's not getting what they want, their behavior will get much worse before it gets better because they have to test like you're, I'm screaming, but you're not paying attention. So now I'm going to scream louder and you're still not paying attention. So maybe now I'm going to throw some things and maybe I'm going to bite someone and maybe I'm going to do all this. And then when they realize, oh, none of this works, then their behavior will drop. And that's actually a behavioral technique that we call called an extinction burst. And a lot of times families give up while the behavior is going up. And then what you're doing then is you're just telling that child, you need to either in tantrum more, be more aggressive before I'm, I attend to you. And we always tell families, you have to work through that behavioral um, extinction burst because once you work through it, the behavior just drops very quickly. And yeah. Janet's nodding her head because she's seen it. And Oh, and yeah. I mean, yeah. and, and it's amazing how that can, if you stop it in that point of time, it might look like the behavior is getting worse, but it's because you didn't work all the way through. And if you work it all the way through, you will see the behavior change when it happens. So you have to give ABA time to work too. You know, yeah. if you do get like, let's say bad ABA, there's, you go get a second um, opinion. Like that's what I tell people. I remember being a young um a young supervisor and I hated it when people came to give um get second opinions on whatever I was doing but the thing is it did make me better you know it, it taught me how to work with other people or to explain why I'm doing what I'm doing and you know of course when I started everybody that came in was came out of the low bus program <laughs> that was doing second opinions so it was very intimidating but it was just like one of these things that you know it does make you better and you can't there is bad ABA out there. And if you think you have bad ABA, I would encourage you to go look and see if there's better because your child deserves it. Yeah, it's one of our missions here on the show to sort of distinguish for people the difference between good ABA and bad ABA. But you should know that really good quality ABA has bound, been found to be the most effective teaching technique across so many different standards, whether it's somebody who's neurotypical or somebody who's on the autism spectrum. And that if you do the right amount uh, of ABA with, and, and it's individual, right? We, we kind of know that if it's somebody who's under the age of five, that the prescription is going to look very similar that, you know, I, I guess that there are some kiddos who may be under the age of five who, who really don't need a 40 hour program, but I'd love to argue that. Um, <laughs> I would really love to argue that because I think sometimes when kids are doing really well under the age of five, they go, let's give them half. And sometimes it short changes them. Um, but that's one way that you can tell your good quality ABA over the age of five, it gets very individualized, but if you're not doing your full prescription, then you really can't, you really can't tell that whether it's working or not. And you might be leaving your child in a place where they're in an extinction burst. So, uh, I'm, I'm losing things in the crawl. So I'm, I, I feel like I'm on a treadmill here. Thanks for watching Autism Live. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.